Today's the opening morning of the Wisconsin firearm season and I'm set up in a tree stand in a really thick pine funnel in hill country. I just had a buck come in right after shooting light. I turned the camera on. There wasn't enough light so I just left it off. He came in broadside about 40 yards and right as I was about to shoot he turned and walked straight away from me and I couldn't get a shot. So I sat back down and about 30 seconds later, I saw him coming back in again. And this time he completed the route that he was going on, kept going broadside. I pulled the trigger on the first opening that he walked into and he didn't drop right on the spot. He looked to me like he was running kind of goofy. Like I think I hit him, but it all happened so fast and the snow is really wet right now. It's really warm, so I couldn't really hear him run off, couldn't really hear him crash or not. So I'm going to wait a good 30 minutes or so, and then I'm going to get down and check for blood. All right, it's been about a half an hour since I shot that buck, and I just walked down here. He was standing about 40 yards, and I have a blood trail, so I'm pretty excited right now. It feels pretty nice to finally get a buck on the ground and it's always nice when you can get him on opening morning. Pretty efficient on time I'd say. You know he's not the biggest buck in the woods but I made a decision this week that I was going to buy a rifle tag in Wisconsin and I wasn't going to be picky I just wanted to fill the freezer and I got to say because of that I'm, I'm pretty happy with this guy. I've already got my stand taken down so now it's just a matter of tagging him, gutting him and dragging him back to the truck. Especially since I didn't film the shot on this hunt, I wanted to add something of a little bit more value to this video. The strategy I used here has been successful for me before. In 2011, I shot a similar 8-pointer in the same spot from the ground on opening weekend. So let's break it down. I'm not using the actual topo here because I do plan on hunting here again, and the 22 vehicles parked here were quite enough in my opinion. But this sketch will illustrate the terrain just as well. I'm defining the top of the hill as this contour line, while the bottom is here, flattening out to a creek a couple hundred feet below. In general, with terrain like this, you see a lot of daylight travel slightly down from the top of the hill, especially on the leeward slopes. This is one of the things I learned from the Hill Country Bucks DVD, which I highly recommend. Scouting here, however, has revealed that this northeast facing slope is too steep for deer to want to traverse. It's nearly vertical in some spots. That funnels the trails to the edge of the bench, where the deer can walk easier. This east facing slope isn't quite as steep and you do tend to see some more of the trails further down from the top of the bench. I also found trails that commonly drop right down to the points, often for bedding but not always. Not shown on the contours is the tree cover. Like so many hill country properties, the flat top is open. I'm not sure if it was naturally like that or if the top was farmed long ago. Now it's mostly overgrown waist high weeds and grass. The primary tree type on this northern slope is evergreen. They're extremely thick and low in spots, with branches interlocking all the way to the ground, while they're more open in others. It makes travel tough, but the trails are a lot more obvious to spot. There happens to be a narrow strip of more open evergreen right at the top of this bench, surrounded on three sides by dense evergreen, and on the high side a mix of pines and overgrown grass. Deer travel to and from the opening, so I'll add those trails as well. The wind on opening morning was southwest, 10 miles per hour. Right away that made me want to focus on the northeast facing slope, where deer can travel the edge of the bench while scent checking the woods and clearing. In addition, the north slope here has a lot of bedding, and the deer will naturally be traveling from the south to the north to bed. On top of that, any hunters traveling to my south or west would tend to bump deer through this funnel. Since I had already harvested a deer in this strip of tall pines and later identified a climbable tree, I knew right where to go to hang my stand before first light. As you just saw, it didn't take long for the spot to produce. This is one of those spots that will produce consistently year after year for the firearm season. A southwest wind makes it best, but hunter foot traffic will tend to push deer through here on other winds. You just need to put your time in. By doing your scouting and finding several of these types of spots, 
you can have your pick based on wind direction opening morning.